Uh, good morning. I would first like to specifically uh, share with you how the Holy Spirit placed some essential people and events in my life and guided me from a, being a newly saved 11-year-old Japanese-American boy growing up in the San Francisco Bay Area and led me to this loving Chinese church and finally on to start a Hispanic uh, mission ministry on a Native American reservation some 50 years after I accepted Christ. Secondly, what I would like to do is address the more general topic of the critical importance of why doing missions plays, should play such an integral part in the life of all followers of Jesus. 首先呢，我想跟您分享一下圣灵是如何在我的生命当中安排了一些重要的人和事件。那这些人和事件呢，在第二次世界大战之后不久，引导了一个哦刚满十一岁的日裔男美国男孩，最终带领他来到这个充满
cultural or even geographic barriers however as we just saw in the case of the local afghan missions work foreign missions can take place right in your own backyard 传福音和宣教之间呢，存在一种微妙的不同。宣教施工呢，通常会涉及到一些我们需要克服的某种障碍，与他人分享福音。比如说语言、文化或地理上的障碍。然而，正如我们的当地的阿富汗传教工作看到
Besides the usual Sunday school and children's activities that I took part in at this church, to this day I shall always remember the summer VBSs and the fun activities that two 25-year-old Japanese-American summer missionaries from Honolulu, Hawaii, lovingly showed my group of about a dozen of my friends. They took us boys camping, fishing, to the beach, and they even took us to my first ever Billy Graham crusade in the Cow Palace in San Francisco in 1955. I will never forget George Beverly Shea singing How Great Thou Art at that crusade. 短期宣教室的重要性除了我在这个教堂里参加常规的主日学和儿童活动外直到今天我仍然会记得两位来自夏威夷檀香山的第一次参加的一九五五年旧金山牛宫的葛培里布道大会，我永远不会忘记乔治·贝佛利·谢伊在那次大会上演唱的《你真伟大的情景》。These men clearly demonstrated the love of God to us boys through their actions and caring. It is primarily because of the example that these two men showed me that 50 years later, I take the poor Hispanic Paula kids to the Welk Resort every summer so that they can enjoy a fun day of swimming, pool games, and sliding down the big rock slide. 正是因为这两位宣教士给我树立的榜样, 50年后我每年都会带贫困的帕拉西班牙裔的孩子们 去那些旅游圣地，让他们游泳，让他们在游泳池里玩游戏，玩大滑梯，让他们享受快乐的时光。For you short-term missionaries who go on summer trips to Tijuana, Arizona, or Pala, please never underestimate the enduring memories that your sharing the love of Christ will have on the children that you meet even welling up unto eternity. And I'll speak more about that in a moment when I talk about that powerful skit that you just saw. Mm-hmm. 稍后呢,当我提到我们的CVF年轻孩子们,在今年8月12日举行的帕拉地区的暑期圣经学校的活动中表演的那个有震撼力的短句时,我会再谈到这一点。The importance of mission-minded mentors. As I travel along life's journey, I won't say that following Christ was always easy, and that I never wavered off the straight and narrow road that God had laid out for me. Both my wife and I attended UC Berkeley during the 1960s, right in the midst of all the turmoil caused by the anti-war, the anti-Vietnam War protests, free speech demonstrations, the upsurge of popularity in marijuana, and the hippie free love movement. 宣教属灵辅导的重要性，在我生命的旅程中，旅程中我不会说跟随基督总是容易的，我也不会说我从未偏离过上帝为我引导的正路。我和我的妻子都在1960年代就读于加州大学伯克利分校，当时正值反越战
during these tumultuous times. However, after graduating from Berkeley and starting to work in Orange County, my wife found this loving Chinese church. 将这所有的世俗的混乱和我们哦百分之九十五的加州大学教授们都是无神论者的状况相结合，您就可以想到，在那个动荡的时期，保持一个基督徒的身份会遇到的挑战。然而，从伯克利毕业后，我开始在城县工作，我的妻子找到了这个充满神的爱的华人教会。Here, I was first exposed to such wonderful mentors. As Pastor Chu, who encouraged me to join the missions committee, then I had the privilege of learning from Pastor Lum just how to do missions on an Indian reservation, where we did Bible studies with a group of alcoholic Native American men. 在这里，我首次接触到了像赵牧师这样的属灵导师，他鼓励我加入宣教委员会。然后我有幸从林牧师那里学到了如何在一个印第安保留区宣教。我们在那里以一群酗酒的印第安男子来查经。Then I was further inspired on、uh, by the missions-minded encouragement from Pastor Ng, who once told me, "Steve, even though this is a Chinese church, you don't have to just take the gospel only to Chinese people. Share Jesus wherever God leads you." On the mission field. 接着，我又受到了吴牧师在宣教方面的鼓励。他曾经告诉我 ，Steve， 即使你在一个华人教会，你不必只把福音传给华人。你可以按着神的带领，在任何一个他所带领的宣教地来传福音。I am eternally grateful for the invaluable support I received from these pastors and other strong proponents of missions, such as. Eugene and Hai Tao, as I traveled along the road to missional opportunities. So, how important should missions be to followers of Jesus Christ? 我成为宣教士的路上得到了这些宝贵牧师的支持，我永远感激不尽。在很多的宣教旅途当中，我也有 Eugene 跟海涛他们一起跟我同行。啊，我们可以看到说，在这些啊，对于基督的。跟随者对于基督徒来说，宣教应该是何等的重要。The importance of the Great Commission. Let's recall what Jesus said in Matthew 28:19 to 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. 大使命的重要性，让我们回顾一下耶稣是怎么说。马太福音二十八章十九到二十节。所以你们要去，使万民做我的门徒，奉父、子、圣灵的名给他们施洗。凡我所吩咐你们的，都教训他们遵守。我就常与你们同在，直到世界的末了。When Jesus told his disciples this. It is important to keep in mind that this is the Great Commission; it's not the Great Suggestion. When he said to go and make disciples, Jesus wasn't talking just to pastors and missionaries; he was addressing all of his followers. When Jesus told his disciples these words, it was important to remember that this is a great commission, not a suggestion. 当他说去使万民做我的门徒时，耶稣不仅仅是对牧师和宣教士说的，他是对所有的信徒说话。Be his witnesses. Jesus also encouraged his disciples when he said in Acts 1:8, as was the scripture reading, "But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea." And in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. 成为他的证人。耶稣鼓励他的门徒们说：“但圣灵降临在你们身上，你们就必得着能力，便要在耶路撒冷、犹太全地和撒玛利亚，直到地极，做我的见证。” And then, the very next verse in Acts 1:9 tells us, after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes. And a cloud hid him from their sight. 
接下来的接下来的一节就是第九节，说了这话，他们正看的时候，他就被取上升，有一朵云彩把他接去，便看不见他了。If Acts one eight was the last thing that Jesus told his disciples before he ascended into heaven, we have to assume it must have been one of the most important. If not the most important instruction he wanted to leave with them, we will revisit Acts 1:8 at the end of this message. 如果《使徒行传》一章八节是耶稣升天前对门徒们说的最后一句话，我们必须要假定这是他想要留给他们的最重要的一个嘱咐。那如果不是最重要的指示呢？我们在这个信息之后呢，我们会重新来看《使徒行传》第一章第八节。The importance of like-minded partners in the gospel. On August twelfth of this year, a wonderful group of short-term missionaries from our church, led by Harvey Young, and listed on this next slide, ventured down to a town near Paula to spend their Saturday conducting a VBS-type event with the children and families of the local area. 有相同心智的同工的重要性。今年八月的。十二日，由我们教会的一群啊、呃、很棒的短宣、短期宣教士，由啊、呃、Harvey Young 带领啊、呃，下在下一个啊、呃、幻灯片上我们会看到，他们冒险的来到帕拉附近的一个小镇，度过他们的星期六，在当地呃和当地的儿童和家庭进行了类似暑期圣经营的活动。Here is a collage of many of the fun activities. That this team helped all the guests enjoy. It was truly a fun-filled day where Jesus was lifted high, including a gospel presentation by Eugene. The highlight of the day, however, was the short skit that you、uh, just saw and that the CYF group performed for the guests. Here's a picture of that skit from that day. 这是短宣队，短宣队带领所有参与者进行很多的有趣的活动的照片合集。这确实是一个充满乐趣的一天。耶稣的名被高举，包括有 j 和大家分享福音。然而，那一天最亮点的是刚才你们看到由 CYF 表演的福音短剧。这些是那天福音短剧的照片。Someone once said that a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, I would like to say that this live skit was worth a million words. As you just saw, the skit portrays how the young sinner, played by Samantha Marr, was consistently tempted by the devil, but eventually found peace and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. 有人说过一话胜千言，那么我想说，这个现场短剧的照片呢，胜过一万个字，一百万个字。正如你们刚才看到的，短剧描述了啊、呃，这个年轻的罪人是由 Samantha Marr 来表演扮演的。他不断的接受魔鬼的诱惑，但最终在耶稣基督里找到了平安和宽恕。During a break following the skit, several Hispanic adult guest attendees, both men and women, told me that they had tears in their eyes as they watched the skit. Because the story told in the skit was their story, a life of making wrong choices and listening to the devil during their younger years, but then being set free from the bondage of sin and finding forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. 在小品结束后的休息时间，几位啊、uh, 西班牙语裔的啊。Uh, 成年男女嘉宾来告诉我，他们在观看小品呃这个短剧之后呢，热泪盈眶，因为这个短剧中讲述的故事就是他们自己的故事。他们在年轻的时候做了错误的选择，听从了魔鬼的话，但后来通过主耶稣基督，从罪的捆绑中得到自由，找到了饶恕。I can only imagine how this powerful skit affected the children and the teenagers that day. And I would like to, at this time, thank、uh, the mission partners who came down on August 12th. I know you had a whole bunch of other things you could have been doing that day, but you sacrificially gave your time from an otherwise busy schedule to share the love of Jesus with lost and dying people. 
，我可以想象这个震撼人心的短剧给少年儿童产生了怎么样的一个影响。那我在同时呢，也想借此机会来感谢我们短宣队的弟兄姐妹。虽然你们在日常的生活当中非常的忙碌，但是你们愿意牺牲自己的时间来啊、呃，服侍这些失丧的灵魂。At this time, I would also like to mention some other important partners in the gospel, such as the WMU sisters, for their constant prayers and support of our Paul activities, including the Back to School Supplies Project. And the Christmas gift bag program. 在此呢，我也想提及一些重要的我的福音伙伴们啊，如妇女传道会的姐妹们，感谢他们不断的为我们帕拉的活动啊祷告和支持，包括我们返销用品项目，还有圣诞礼物包。I also want to thank those individual church members who have donated、uh, many useful new and used items to the poor Hispanic families. And finally, I would like to thank Patty and、uh, Louis Hernandez, who are my Hispanic partner couple, that provide invaluable bilingual spiritual support to our many Hispanic families. 我还要感谢那些为贫困的啊帕拉的西班牙裔家庭捐赠了很多有用的新旧物品的个别教会的弟兄姐妹们。最后，我还要感谢啊、uh, ，Patty 还有 Louis 夫妇，他们是我的西班牙裔伙伴的夫妇，他们为我们西班牙裔的家庭提供了宝贵的双语属灵支持。Commanded to go. Now I would like to shift our focus to the very important general question of why should we go on missions. I would like to do this by examining this morning the parable of the Good Samaritan. This is a parable I know that everyone in this room is familiar with, and can be found in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. 受命而去。现在呢，我想我们的注意力，我想把我们的注意力转移到我们为什么要去宣教这个重要的问题上。今天上午呢，我想通过好的撒玛利亚人的比喻来回答这个问题。我知道在座的各位都非常熟悉这个比喻，它可我们可以在路加福音第十章二十五到三十七七节当中找到。Now this parable usually isn't associated within a missions context, but teaches, of course, more about being a good neighbor and caring about others. However, this morning I would like to discuss an observation from the parable. That I hope you will at least consider the next time、um, a missions opportunity may become available to you. This parable is usually associated with missions. It more teaches us how to be a good neighbor and how to care for others. In the morning, I want to share a few thoughts about this parable. I hope you will consider it. We won't read the entire passage here, but as you recall, this is a story about three different men who encounter on the road going down from Jerusalem to Jericho a half-dead man who has been beaten and robbed. I would like to focus on the following three verses from Luke 10. 我们不会在在这里读整段的经文，但请大家记得，这是一个关于三个不同人的故事。他们从耶路撒冷到耶利哥的路上，遇到了一个被抢劫又被打得半死的人。我想重点谈谈《路加福音》第十章中以下三节经文。Verse thirty-one, a priest happened to go down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and took care of him. 偶然有一个祭司从这条路上下来，看见他就从从边从那边去了。又有一个利未人来到这地方，看见他，也照样从那边过去了。唯有一个撒玛利亚人行路来到那里，看见他就动了慈心，上前用酒和油倒在他的伤处，包裹好了，扶他骑上自己的牲口，带到店里去照顾他
Now, Bible scholars and commentators have speculated as to why the priest and the Levite, who were actually bound by Jewish law to help a brother in need, simply passed by on either side of the badly wounded man and left him to die. Perhaps they were both afraid that if they stopped to help the injured man, they would be easy prey to the same robbers. 现在圣经学者和一些解经家们都在猜测根据犹太的律法祭司和立位人其实都是有义务要帮助这个需要帮助的弟兄的但他们为什么只是从重伤者的两侧经过任由他死去也许他们都害怕如果他们停下来帮助
。为了回答这些问题呢，我想提，我想请大家把注意力转移到我们宣教的主要目的上来。我们使用“我们需要拯救迷失的人”或者“我们需要找到迷失的人”等委婉的说法。Well, when you stop and truly think about it, when you go on missions and share Jesus Christ with someone and the Holy Spirit. Leads them to accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. You have helped play a role in、um, making dead people become alive. 那么，当你静下心来，真正思考一下，当你去宣教，并与人分享耶稣，圣灵引导他们接受基督为他们的主和救主时，你就扮演了帮助死人复活的角色。Yes, they were spiritually dead and destined to spend eternity separated from God, but through Jesus Christ, they now have eternal life. 是的，他们在属灵上已经死了，注定要与神永远分离。但是通过耶稣基督，他们现在获得了，他们可以获得永生。Let me further illustrate this point with a shocking recent example that you may have read about. In the darkness of just this past July, more than 100 men and women advanced warily through the ice and up the steep mountain, grasping tightly to safety ropes in their quest to reach the summit. 让我用最近一个令人震惊的例子来说明这一点。啊，您可能已经读到了，呃，已经知道这个例子。在今年七月，啊，一个非常黑暗的时候。一百多名男男女女战战兢兢地穿过冰层，爬上陡峭的山峰，紧紧抓住安全绳，试图登上山顶。Some had waited months and paid heavily for this ascent. They had a small window. Winds had finally calmed down on the morning of July 26, giving them their first chance to conquer K2, the second largest, tallest mountain in the world. 有些人等待了几个月，并为这次登复、呃、登顶呢付出了沉重的代价。他们只有一个小小的机会，就是七月二十六号的上午，风终于平息了。这给登山队征服世界第二高峰 K2 的第一次机会。The window was small as a fierce storm was forecast to hit the mountain on July 28th. So up and up they went, eager athletes, Nepali Sherpas. Western mountain guides and over 100 high-paying foreign clients. 但由于预报说七月二十八日将有一一场猛烈的暴风雪袭击这座山峰，所以这个机会很渺茫。于是，热血沸腾的运动员们——尼泊尔、夏尔巴人、西方登山向导，还有一百多名啊高薪聘请的外国客户，都纷纷上了山。And then there was Mohammed Hassan. A poor Pakistani porter, tasked with carrying equipment for the rope-fixing team, the 27-year-old climbed the frigid heights, but then something terrible happened. They would find him upside down that night, dangling from a rope at 27,000 feet, hanging helplessly above an abyss. 穆罕默德·哈桑是一位可怜的巴基斯坦搬运工，他的任务是为绳索固定小组搬运设备。而这位二十七岁的年轻人爬上了寒冷的高山，但可怕的事情发生了。当晚，他们发现他倒挂在两万七千英尺高空的绳索上，无助地悬挂在万丈深渊之上。By the end of the summit window, at least 102 people had conquered K2. All pain climbers would descend the mountain safely and regroup at base camp, celebrating their victory. But Mohammed was not one of them. He had died on the mountain. 在登登顶窗口期结束时，至少有一百零二人征服了 K2 峰。所有人付出的代价，他们啊，所有的登山者都安全的下山。在大本营重新集合庆祝他们的胜利，但穆罕默德不在其中。He had died on the mountain while 102 people 
had passed by without trying to save him. Was it greed for glory and bragging rights that had blinded more than 100 climbers who left Mohammed stranded to die on the ice? Could these climbers have been thinking, what does it mean for me if I stop and help this man? I wonder if even just one of them had thought that night, what does it mean for him if I don't stop and help him? He died on the mountain, and 102 people did not try to save him. 是对荣耀和炫耀那些权力的贪婪蒙蔽了这一百多位登山者，让穆罕默德死在冰山冰面上吗？这些登山者会不会在想，如果我停下来帮助这个人，对我意味着什么？我不知道他们中间是否在那天晚上有想过，如果我不停下来帮助他，对他意味着什么 ？There are millions of Mohammeds throughout the world. However, they are not hanging from a rope and unconscious at 27,000 feet above sea level, but they are standing on the edge of a precipice facing eternity. And if they fall off that precipice without Jesus Christ, they will encounter eternal darkness and separation from God forever. 全世界有数百万的穆罕默德。然而，我们他们并不是被吊在绳子上，并不是在海拔两万七千英尺的地方失去知觉，但是他们正站在悬崖边上，面对永恒。如果没有耶稣基督，他们就会掉下悬崖，遭遇永恒的黑暗，永远的黑暗，永远与上帝隔绝。Can we afford to pass by all the lost sinners who live on the mission field? The way the 102 climbers passed by Mohammed, shouldn't we be asking the question, what does it mean for them, the lost sinners, if I don't go on this mission trip? We can like the 102 climbers and Mohammed pass by the way, like the sinners who pass by the mission field, and pass by the way the 102 climbers and Mohammed pass by the way, like the sinners who pass by the mission field, and pass by the way the 102 climbers and Mohammed pass by the way the sinners. What if you were the only one who was able to connect that day with that lost person who decided to accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior because they saw His love in you? If that day only you, only you alone, can connect with this lost person, and he, because he saw Jesus' love in you, decided to accept Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior, that day you would be the only one who was able to connect with that lost person. What is the cost of even one human soul that will spend eternity in heaven because of your efforts, because you cared, because you were willing to sacrificially go and share God's love in an inconvenient place? The value of that human soul is priceless. 哪怕是只有一个灵魂，因为你的努力，你的关心。你愿意牺牲自己，去一个不方便的地方分享神的爱，而在天堂度过永恒的时光，代价又是多少呢？这个灵魂在天堂的价值是无价的。I would like to close with a song that I first heard in the 1980s when the Lord was truly opening my eyes to the importance of missions. Now you can't see her, but right now my wife Terry is squirming in her seat right down there. And she's saying, "Please, please, don't try and sing that song." <laughs> so don't worry, Terry. I am not going to try and sing the song, but I will uh, recite the words to you. And these words remind me of many of the people that I see on an Indian reservation. 最后，我想用一首我在二十世纪八十年代第一次听到的歌来结束我的分享。当时主真正的开启了我的属灵的眼睛。让我认识到宣教的重要性。现在你可能看到我的妻子正在座位上，告诉我不要唱这首歌。总之，这首歌的歌名呢是《人们需要主》。那我也告诉我的妻子不要担心，因为我只是要朗读一下这个歌词，让她想起，因为这个歌词呢让我想起了我每天在印第安保留区看到的许多人。People need the Lord. Every day they pass me by. I can see it in their eyes. 
Empty people filled with care, headed who knows where. 人们需要主，每天他们从我身边经过，我都看得到。他们眼里的茫然，不知要往哪里去。On they go through private pain, living fear to fear. Laughter hides their silent cries that only Jesus hears. 人生路程极艰难，整日心恐惧，欢笑掩饰心哭泣。We are called to take His light to a world where wrong seems right. What could be too great a cost for sharing life with one who's lost? 主照我们发真光，现世代对错不分，有代价嫌太高，向失丧人传福音。Through His love, our hearts can feel. All the grief they bear, they must hear the words of life. Only we can share. 透过他的爱，我们的心可以体会到他们所承受的所有悲伤。他们必须听到主赐生命的话语，只有我们可以分享。People need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, He's the open door. People need the Lord. When will we realize that we must give our lives? People need the Lord. 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 Finally, I would like to leave you with one important thought as you contemplate. Whether or not the Lord is calling you to serve Him sometime, somewhere on the mission field, to share the gospel with someone who is lost and dying. 最后，在你思考是否主呼召你在某个时候、某个地方到宣教的地方去服侍他，与失丧和垂死的人分享福音时，我想给你留下一个重要的想法。I would like to paraphrase what Jesus said. In Acts 1:8, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Anaheim, in Tijuana, in Arizona, in Pala, across American college campuses, in China, and to the ends of the earth. 但圣灵降在你们身上，你们就必得着能力。并要在安纳汉、蒂华纳、亚利桑那州、帕拉、美国大学校园、中国，直到地极，做我的见证。And as they say on the reservation, muchas gracias and vaya con Dios, mis amigos. Thank you very much and go with God, my friends. 非常感谢，与上帝同行，我的朋友们。